How's it going guys? This is Mr. Lone Wolf. And uh, today it's just a little bit of a kind of silly throwaway mission. My brother came over earlier so I kind of didn't even get started until late. Um, yeah, this is the second truck out of that new Tatra pack. Again, it's a bit of a smaller, silly, kind of fun truck. It's not really a serious contender. Um, but I just looked on the missions I've got available at the minute and this was a mission that with a absolute beastie truck is, you know, going to be a 10 minute mission. It's almost too short to bother making a video on. The fact that I know this thing is going to struggle a little bit, I may as well uh, make a little video on it, see how it is, and yeah, like I said, it's just a bit of a silly video, really. I didn't have time to get stuck into anything too crazy. I basically got to go to that warehouse where I did the spring cleaning contract to unlock it, get an oversized cargo, and then, yeah, go down that road and drop it off in some village. Um, this is it. I've just quickly nipped back and uh, put a roof rack on it, but yeah, that van body thing at the back has got repair points. I'll be honest, I can't remember off the top of my head how many it's got. I think it's 500, but I, yeah, don't quote me on that. Um, it's got a little roof rack though as well. I was bringing a little goddamn horse for me because, well, you'll see. So we're driving along. Let's see how well it goes. First things first, <laughs> I started going from like the tarmac to the mud. The extra resistance that slowed my truck down changing to that terrain the trailer behind me was still pushing as hard as it could and I just, yeah, started digging and jackknifing. And I've already rolled and, yeah, we've made it just out of the uh, yard. <laughs> so you could tell the kind of mission it was going to be. Again, though, I already kind of knew that was going to be the case. Uh, I thought in my own head, worst case, if it really can't handle it, I'll just bring the Tatra out, like the, pro you know, the better one, um, the eight-wheel one and that. But, yeah, I just kind of figured it, it. There's really not a lot of look through, like, there's none of the contracts, there's... Yeah, barely any missions that it's worth doing with this. There was another mission on this map, Ch uh, Chimcharuski, whatever it's called, Chinokomensk. Uh, getting like a CK-1500 from the top corner of the map and taking that. But I was looking at the amount of distance and the amount of like super snow bits I'll have to drive over and stuff. And yeah, it just wouldn't have been good. I mean, there you go, you see, horse already paying for himself. Admittedly, I'm like right outside the garage near enough, so I could have just disconnected the trailer, recovered. Drove back out, but just in more terms of principle, that I, once I set off, I like to try and make it without, uh, yeah, having to bring any other trucks or use like the recover and drive back trick. So the loaf saved me there. Um, the funny thing with this is though, it's got quite a punchy engine for like, considering it just looks like a little small old school van. Uh, it's also quite nice that it's got the high range gearbox, which yeah, it's not classed as a scout. It is classed as a truck, so it gets. What I assume is truck engines and uh, yeah, truck gearboxes, which I prefer them over the Scout engine and gearboxes. Uh, more the gearboxes, really. Um, yeah, like I said, it's got like plenty of repairs and stuff. I mean, it's clearly just not going to be very good. This mission, it was one of the shortest missions I could do, but obviously I have to bring a ramped flatbed, which I don't like at the best of times. And this thing, it really isn't going to be keen on a ramped flatbed. But like I said, I knew it kind of made, well, the video's practically 20 minutes long, so yeah, I think I could have done this with a normal truck in 10 minutes. A little bit slow now, maybe I could have put the off-road gearbox in, at least I'd have like high-low I could go into now, but it depends really, because some of these sort of sections of snow and stuff appear to have like an ultimate speed cap on it, where it doesn't matter if you're in a bit of a naff truck. Or, you know, one of the best trucks in the game. It's it's going to let you have a ceiling speed of, like, five miles an hour regardless. But no doubt, there, were, there is stuff that could go quicker through this section than this is, like, able to at the minute. It was around now, to be honest. I was kind of thinking to myself, well, do I just <laughs> abort mission now quickly? But, um, yeah, I kind of kept the throttle going and when I got to this point I was like well it should speed up a bit now so we'll see. I've got to give it some kind of chance. I'll do the review on this pretty soon. I'm kind of hoping, again I don't expect it to be a serious contender truck. I can't remember how much money it is. I think it's around 70 grand maybe. Like again it's not you know top truck sort of money. Um, yeah it's just a bit of a fun one. It's still after driving it tonight without the trailer. I just had a little rag around in it before I started recording this and uh it reminds me a little bit, again, like the Taz and the Warthog. More the Taz, if anything. It's, like, quite fast and it goes a bit mental. I believe you can Jeff special it. So it'll go a bit crazy if you want it to. And, uh, yeah, you can ram it with repair points and you will probably roll it. <laughs> is a pretty good way to describe this, I would say. It's definitely... I mean, there, to be fair, it's bloody close to tipping there, but it didn't. There's certainly stuff that did. 
Uh, well, I went down there the other day and the pay star there rolled and the uh, step toe tried rolling off the trailer. Yeah, this was close, but it didn't too. It's more because it's little and it's bouncy and it's fast. Yeah, it's just a little bit mental, if you know what I mean. So, But again, in a way, that's like a fun thing to add. If they're not going to add a serious truck, I'd rather it just at least be a fun truck. Uh, I've seen some people saying this is like a loaf on steroids. I mean, on paper, yeah, it's got slightly bigger tyres. You can have like the custom Tager mods on it, which is pretty cool. I had to put the chain on at the minute, though, because there was an icy hill I'd have to go up. Um, I mean, yeah, it's actually really not much bigger than the loaf at all. Like, But the pretty cool thing is that back two-thirds of the truck is like, you know, a, a whole chunk of repairs, whereas like the loaf's van interior is kind of just left empty when really they should uh, allow you to like yeah pack more supplies in the back of the loaf um yeah in reality it definitely ain't no loaf replacement as far as i'm concerned like i packed a loaf on the roof of it earlier and uh it you could already see the suspension starting to tip a little bit just with a loaf on the roof let alone when i was driving yeah you'd tip it in seconds but you don't really need to do that i was just doing it messing around sort of seeing uh, what it can and can't do I mean again like you could possibly use it in place of a loaf for some things that I think it pretty sure it'd fit in like the sideboard of a dolphin or whatever and there'd be more repair points I still personally would want the loaf because there's just so many other things that it could uh, help me out on but yeah I mean it might have its advantages here and there Certainly, like, the main point of getting this pack of trucks is that Tatra T813 or whatever it's called. See, little bits, like, through this yard, though, considering it is dragging that ramped flatbed, it's, you know, got a bit of speed to it. It's quicker than the other Tatra, ironically. I mean, yeah, not once it's loaded up with cargo, but... And of all the things, I needed an oversized cargo, so there's, like, a four-slot thing as well, so... Again, it's probably not the, uh, the ideal mission... But none of them are because it's just it's kind of out of its depth on these maps. It'd be another one of those vehicles that'd be kind of interesting and at least more useful on maps like Michigan, you know, and Black River and Smithville and probably Northport stuff like that. It'd still get bogged down a bit in the. I think snow. It's snow. It's going to suffer with because it's a pretty light truck. It's not insanely light. Well, it is, but it's a little vehicle, so I didn't expect it to weigh a, a ton to begin with. Um, yeah, like, heavy vehicles work better in snow. Sometimes light vehicles, when it comes to mud, can get away with it because if they're just light enough that they don't really squidge too deep into the mud, yeah, and they'll just kind of scrat around and scrape across the top of the mud. Um, yeah, snow, though, it generally I've found, like, the heavier the vehicle, the better. Hence why, like I said, the P16 is pretty bloody good on snow, considering it's not even all-wheel drive and it's not really the best design and shape for you know going full on off-roading like can handle a bit of off-roading but it's not as like the chassis and everything's not as well mapped out as something like a Tega but the uh, the P16 is a bit of a beast across snow just because of how heavy it is and how well it plants itself and again the collobs they're very good the dolphin's good and yeah I mean up to now it was you know a few little slow sections all the rest of it but it was now where I started hitting this kind of terrain I can't really help it. You can see that marker further in the distance. I believe there's like a little bit of road there. We were still moving this fast and I was like, well... I mean, again, I certainly wouldn't recommend this to do this mission or, you know, 99% of missions really. Certainly not on these maps. But I was like, well, I'm still moving, so, you know, credit where it's due. It's better than already being stuck. Uh, I've got the chained on it, but I'm going to go out on a limb and bet money they're not the mud chained. They'll be like the off-road or the all-terrain chained, which I'm not a particular fan on. I wanted to put the uh, custom muds on for this mission, which, like I said, they're like the Tega muds. They just look a lot nicer for a start, which is uh, kind of important. Again, the truck doesn't weigh crazy amounts, so it's not going to get a massive advantage from the chains, as in, like... The chains feel like they've got little notches that bite onto things, but you've got to have a bit of weight with the vehicle to, you know, apply enough downforce for that sort of bite effect to kick in, so... Yeah, I mean, with custom muds, I had a little drive around it again earlier with the custom muds, and it's not too keen on the, the patches of super snow and mud and that, but on certain bits of road, yeah, it was ticking along just fine. It was bombing along quicker than you'd think. Uh, long story short, I started getting bogged down there. I had to send an, out the horse to drag me out of there. 
And I'm, I'm going to edit ahead in a minute, because, I mean, long story short, it was, like, past that marker you can see drawn just up the road. Um, yeah, I was going pretty slow, like, the loaf got me out of that section, then I winched to that telegraph pole to the uh, right of the loaf. I mean, there's, I have no doubt the loaf could have got this vehicle all the way to its destination, but it wouldn't be economical time-wise, and I didn't really want to edit or make a video like that anyway, so there's just no point. I'll be doing it out of sheer stubbornness and <laughs> not really any logical benefit to me to do so. And then, yeah, these little log things I was driving along, it like got a bit of normal speed there, caught the trailer on the loaf, so I just winched that telegraph pole. Got back to more mud, and I was like, yeah, God, I sort of... I'm done. That'll do. That's enough. So, long story short, got me a Tatra um, from the garage. Again, I was going to bring the custom mud version. I've got two of these trucks, one of each, with each set of tyres on. Uh, but, yeah, I believe there's a little bit of an icy hill coming up, so I had to grab this one with the chain on. And, of course, got another goddamn horse. Just to be safe, you never know. Well, I didn't roll on this section. This is clearly like a better truck for not rolling. It was more the trailer with the uh, little Tatra that force me to tip over on that corner but that is part of the problem what I was actually doing I forgot to mention it but when I was towing the loaf behind the ramped flatbed the reason I was doing that is because then when I went down this hill in the little Tatra the trailer tried to do the same thing again and then I press square turn the loaf off on the engine and then the loaf becomes a ramped flatbed anchor which stopped the ramped flatbed now shoving into my truck and jackknifing me so again that's another way that the goddamn horse of a vehicle finds a way to be useful. Um, yeah, as I was driving down now, I was just looking, like, you can see down the road that's down the mountainside, I stopped basically down there, so I was kind of thinking, could I fly off this mountain and kind of, you know, yeah, find a shortcut. <laughs> I can't resist my shortcuts. I certainly learned the hard way more than once that they ain't always a good idea, but you never know unless you try. Pretty bloody steep clip that tree though thankfully I'm like yeah that just sort of I knew if I can bump into that tree I won't really tip to the side I'll just kind of scrape the loaf down the side of it which I've said as well it works when I've been through tippy tree areas like if I tip now and the loaf starts propping itself up against a tree before I've tipped to my engine stalls that's uh, saved me a good few times as well and uh, yeah it was worth it it was a good little shortcut that one saved me just going further sort of winding down the mountain cutting across the snow again and then following back down this road and at this point what I was actually thinking of doing was disconnecting the trailer off the little Tatra just recovering that back to the garage attaching the ramped flatbed to this truck and then I'll tow the uh, the other loaf there like behind me but then as I was like sod it as I'm doing this video and I was supposed to be doing the Tatra is it yeah the Tatra 805 I'll just stick a winch to it we tag team loaf we've got a loaf with us so we're cool the, uh, the horse, he'll be alright on his own. He'll handle it. And again, yeah, even though I've had to drive this thing down here, I'd probably only be about here now with this bloody thing. I mean, maybe, well, I was going to say, maybe it'd be alright as a little scout vehicle. You know, you can put the roof rack on, put that little van body add on, so repairs-wise and fuel-wise, you should be alright for a bit. But I still think in the long run you'd be better scouting with a truck. Like I scout with Dolphin and Loaf and they're a perfectly decent set of vehicles to go scouting with. I can cover a lot, large parts of the map with a Dolphin. And then any bits that are like really tight, windy, narrow narrow roads or like loads of dense trees and that. I can just get the Loaf out the sideboard, send them in. And yeah, I've, I've been using Dolphin and Loaf since we got like the Rift map I think. And uh, yeah pretty successful as far as the scout in the maps go. Never really had any major issues. Yeah, I believe that was the icy hill I just went up, so that's kind of why I needed the chain. Maybe I could have used the bank along the edge. There's been a few places that caught me out, though, where there was no bank at the side of the road I could use, and I was in, say, the Zix, and I had the custom muds. They are certainly, oh, like, the custom muds, particularly on these newer maps, are better, way better for the super, uh, sorry, the death snow and death mud. That's why I'm still pretty interested in, like, you know, I, I certainly still bear them in mind on this truck. Uh, that's why I own one of each truck. I've got an orange one that's got the custom ones and this green one that's got the chain on. 
And uh, yeah, at some point I'd like to do a mission with a road train and I'll sort of take one of each tyre type and uh, hopefully find some examples of where it's handy to have both types on you. So I read someone said in the comments and uh, quite a few people have said this over the, you know, the last six months or whatever I've said it. It's a good idea though, like for example my loaf now in the back has got four spare tyres. It'd be pretty cool if the game would allow me to, like, say if I went to fit those four tyres on the loaf, or in fact, I suppose because I'd take four tyres off, it shouldn't even use them up. But it'd be pretty cool if I could swap tyre sets, basically. And again, if this Tatra could do the same, if I could now swap these from chain to custom muds, that'd probably actually help. I believe I'm beached on a rock, I don't think it'd help now. Uh, the chain are better at climbing over rocks than custom muds, but yeah, driving through this actual muddy section, like, at this particular moment in time, it would be quite handy just to be able to press some buttons and change my Tatra over to custom muds, and then, yeah, get to an icy hill, change it back over to chained, etc. There must be something under this Tatra, kind of roughly in the middle, between the fuel tanks, maybe, that it catches on. Maybe it's like a, um, what do you call it? Not the diff and that, a, uh, I can't remember. Some kind of box underneath the truck <laughs> that I forgot the name of, completely forgot it. Mine's gone blank. Transfer case, maybe that's, I believe, what I was thinking of. Anyway, there appears to be something, like, it did drive over a pretty big rock there. But, yeah, this seems to, if you get something, like, perfectly in the middle of a truck, it seems to sort of beach it where it can't really get off front or back. A bit of sort of jiggling the throttle, flooring it backwards and forwards, and that I got off there though. And again, that uh, little Tatra just wouldn't have got through that section. Maybe there was enough dead trees there I could have winched to, but yeah, the point being, it's out of its depth even doing this mission, even though it's not really a Challenger mission. If I'd done this mission in the Dolphin, you know, yeah, 10 minutes or something, it'd be done. Maybe not even 10 minutes. But again, it was just a bit of a silly throwaway mission, like I say, I wasn't setting my hopes high for this. <laughs> I kind of had this as a backup plan idea to just send in the big Tatra, if it gets too annoying. It's good old Stevie Wonder. See, now at this point, like, I think I go into high-low or something in this truck in a minute. But either way, I'm sure I'm using about 15, 16 litres a minute now. And I'm obviously going pretty slow because it's just got the slower set of gearboxes. The Dolphin, I've shown you like towing trailers as well. I've been flying down here in high gear. And that's probably sitting at, you know, yeah, 15, 16 litres a minute. So in this sense right now, the Dolphin would be like three times more economical on the fuel. So even though it's got a smaller fuel tank, I'd be covering a much more distance for the, for the fuel I'm using. And that's just where, I mean, it's not as you know, like, black and white as far as fuel goes, oh, you've got more fuel, you'll get further. It's like, there is the factor of how fast can you go and how often can you maintain that speed, etc. And that's just where the Dolphin makes back up a bit. It's still overall poor on fuel, like, I've never tried to say it's not, but it's just not as bad as it first appears. I couldn't, I could hardly see that mark, I still barely can now, it's obviously like sort of yellow, it almost blends into the snow. There it is, I'm sort of showing up a bit better now. And again, well, I mean, if you look at it, like, you can see the loaf in the sideboard. This thing is only a tiny bit bigger than the loaf. But we got there, dropped it off. Uh, is that mission, like, five, six grand? I mean, all things considered, again, I could have done it in a dolphin and done it in ten minutes. It would have been pretty bloody easy, so... The horn reminds me a little bit like a train horn, funnily enough. Not quite as loud, but, you know, that, like, double sort of noise to it. Um, yeah, but, I mean, that's it. There you go. I'll review it pretty soon, but it's a little bit of a sort of silly throwaway vehicle. Once I've reviewed it and messed around with it, it's probably not going to be making that many appearances in videos, if I'm honest. But, um, yeah, anyway, that's about it for today, though. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's a beast, and I'll be back soon.